Let's talk about a condition called pseudotumor cerebri. In some patients, headaches and vision problems and ringing in the ears can be due to a condition called pseudotumor cerebri. Another name for it is idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So what is it and how is it diagnosed? The idea is that in some patients with the symptoms I mentioned, the pressure inside of the head is too high for some reason. If we don't know the reason, then we say it's idiopathic. And that would be the term idiopathic intracranial or inside the head hypertension or high pressure. In some patients, it can be to a blockage of the blood flow leaving the brain. It could be from a tumor or a medicine or an endocrine problem. How do we diagnose it? Well, the first part of the diagnosis would be a CT scan or an MRI. The fluid-filled spaces inside of the brain called the ventricles in patients with this condition are either small or normal-sized. In patients with this condition, there are, there are no masses or no tumors that are found. That's a different problem. And then when a spinal tap is done, the pressure is, is high, greater than 25 centimeters of water. And that's done by a lumbar puncture. And the technician that does it measures how high the pressure is of the spinal fluid. There's a few things that patients should do if they possibly have this condition. One is to check the eyes because this problem can affect eyesight. And usually the ophthalmologist will do what's called a fundoscopic exam and they look at the back of the retina to see if there's swelling. An MRI should be done. And also a study called an MR venogram or CT venogram. And all that really is, is looking at the veins that drain the blood from the head. In some cases, there's a blockage of those veins and that's the cause of the problem. And then I mentioned doing the lumbar puncture. One other thing that would be done in addition to measuring the pressure is looking at the spinal fluid to see if there's any abnormal cells in it or an increase in protein or something like that. So how is idiopathic intracranial hypertension treated um, and managed? In about 90% of patients with this condition, they are uh, women who are overweight or obese. And it, it has been found in the literature that if patients are in that category and they lose about 10% of their body weight, then the symptoms significantly improve. So if a patient weighs 250 pounds and they were able to lose 25 pounds, then that's actually the best treatment for the condition. Sometimes medications are given like acetazolamide or topiramate, and they can have some effect. I think that usually it's temporary uh, and there are side effects to the medication, but that is one form of treatment. Another treatment is called a VP shunt, and that's a tube that goes into the brain to drain the spinal fluid down to the abdomen. And the intent of that treatment is to help control the pressure by draining the fluid when the pressure is too high. The problem with that treatment is the rate of needing another surgery is about 50%. So there's a high failure rate. If we can avoid doing a VP shunt, that would be the best thing. So the focus should be primarily on weight loss, good nutrition, et cetera, to see if we can help reverse the symptoms that way. So in summary, pseudotumor cerebri uh, 
and idiopathic intracranial hypertension are conditions or condition in which the pressure inside of the head is too high for some reason. And it's important to look at the eyes to make sure that vision is not affected and to do a full workup, including MR, MRI scans and uh, the MRV, which looks at the veins, and also to look at the opening pressure or the pressure when doing a lumbar puncture. The most important treatment for this would be weight loss and to try to lose about 10% of uh, a patient's weight if they are overweight or obese. In some cases, we will recommend doing a, a, a VP shunt.